Oh, my friends, my friends, my friends. What uh, what do we do? What do we even do anymore? I sometimes I truly I don't I don't know what uh, what to do. I mean, New York just seems like every day it gets worse and worse and worse for our Second Amendment culture, and uh, it's getting very frustrating. And and this latest uh, ammo background check law that's finally taken effect it's finally in place man they've just screwed it up six ways to sunday and it's just we're mad we're mad we're very mad we're frustrated i know you are too and we're just we've been put in these positions by people who they don't care they don't they don't see things you know the way real people see they don't live in the real world basically like we do uh and 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 I don't know. I'm all alone tonight, as you can tell. Well, Josiah's here, but I'm up here all by myself, so you're going to have to deal with some ranting and some raving. Um, As you know, as most of you probably know, starting yesterday, there is now a background check for ammunition, and New York State is now handling the background check for ammo. Uh, Sorry, for guns. They're handling the background check for guns now. So before, we used to contact the FBI... And we would type in all your information on the 4473, and then they would give us an answer and everything would be cool. And it was free in the sense that we already paid for it through our federal tax dollars. There wasn't a fee like per per check like there is now. Uh, and, and now New York State is in the mix. And I don't know, what are they really doing other than literally taking the information that we already gave to Nick's? Now we're giving it to New York State. They give it to Nick's for us. They get the answer from Nick's for us, and they give us that answer. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I, before we get too far, before I get like way too amped up, something that does make sense, especially right now, is taking care of your body, right? We only have one of those, and as you can tell, mine is a temple, and we need to do whatever we can to strengthen all of our skill sets and and you know the the body is the greatest weapon of all of them right we need to be we need to be healthy two way activists right uh, and obviously I'm I'm among those so one way that you can do that and you know these are people that support us they support you they are second amendment lovers themselves is beyond driven fitness in Leroy uh, they are a 24/7 gym that is not your typical you know small town gym that you might think of uh, they were voted the best gym in Genesee County, and they have uh, adult training. They speci- or, uh, specialize in athletic training and, and really getting in there scientifically, analyzing you, know, you and how you work out and your goals and building a plan uh, to get there. They have, I think, a really cool program, uh, Bedrock, they call it, for the fourth to sixth graders. So as it, the name implies, like, that's when your little ones are getting serious about sports. And, I mean, the way the world is these days, who wouldn't want their kid to get a sports scholarship to, uh, to, to college? So that's a great way. They have training all the way through, you know, the school years into the college years. They can really take your student athlete where they would want to go. And they've got a Beyond Boxing program now. They've got they, – they really – they just keep investing in their gym and in their members. So – once again, Beyond Driven, they're right here in Leroy, just down the road. Great, great local gym, great local people. And, yeah, I just wanted to get that out before I got too hot under the collar. Uh, and, obviously, our friends at API, Arms Preservation, Inc., you've got to, you know, protect your body, but also protect the investments that you're making, the firearms, the ammo, that the precious little bit of ammo you might be able to buy these days. Uh, you want to protect it. API is the best way, in our opinion, to do so. They have these amazing bags, high quality. Like, you can put a gun in there. I mean, guns can have some sharp corners and stuff, and I would not be worried about a gun puncturing through one of these bags. Great stuff, made locally, right here in East Rochester. They are infused with a, uh, a treatment that makes a microenvironment around your firearm protecting and preserving it for the long term. Ammo as well. Like I said, they make 50 cal ammo can liners. Do not store your ammo in the factory box if you can help it. The factory box, cardboard, styrofoam, not good. It will collect moisture, just sucking it up like a dehumidifier in the air, uh, and it will hold it next to your ammo, and that's not good. So 
Put your ammo in ammo cans of some kind, locked and sealed in API bags if you intend on doing it for long-term storage. So I think some links went down below in the chat uh, and let us know what you think. I am trying to get into the chat. Uh, let's see here. So anyways, what do we have going on? What is this? Oh, look at this view. I think I can see that, right? I just click on view post. Okay, let's see this. So uh, we've had, I mean, it was a crazy day the night before the, um, the, the, the new law that got passed, right? Which is, is always unfortunate. I mean, we like to see, you know, people taking care of stuff. It's like this first day of hunting season, right? You're going to have the guy coming in like, oh, I just realized I got to get my scope sighted in. And, and I get that. But the day before uh, the ban on Tuesday night, Tyler and I and some others, we were here right till midnight. We were right here till the bitter end. We put a post out. We went live. Uh, we actually did one last check through the FBI system just to, like, say goodbye to them, as silly as that is. Uh, and, yeah, then we tried to do a check, which brings me to one of my first pieces of correspondence here. Uh, so, Tuesday night, midnight. It's now Wednesday. It's now the 13th. And actually, I should start. This was my email to the New York State Knicks <clears throat> at troopers.ny.gov. Tuesday, September 12th at 9.12 in the morning, I asked them, what are the hours of operation for the New York State Knicks for firearm and ammunition background checks? And I also asked, does their phone number, which is one eight seven seven ny nicks does that number have people answering it? Because I have been trying to get through all morning and I can't get through. And so later that day at 4.18, so basically the end of the day, they said uh, that, Mr. Lewis, background checks can be run at any time. The Knicks office will be available from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. So me calling at 9 a.m., they should be open. They're open at 7 a.m. He says we've been, or they have, they say we've been receiving a very high call volume. Do you still require any assistance with setting up your account? Now we, that brings me to a point, we luckily did not have trouble setting up an account. I went on the website the day it was available. I entered in our information and we were set up, which I wasn't happy about, I guess, but that's better than some dealers. I've been in contact with dealers across the state and there are dealers who have not been able to get set up right up until the very day of the background check system taking effect. So they had no time to get familiar with it. They had no time to, you know, make sure that their things were accurate, make sure that their credit card information was in there correctly, yada, 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 right? So the, the rollout of this, we can be mad, and we are. I am, you are. I am mad about how this has gone down. I'm mad that it exists. I'm mad how they rolled it out. It's just madness across the board, right? And we need to do something about it. And as silly as it sounds, I think one of the ways that we can do something about it, we have constantly been getting delays for people that have no right to be delayed I haven't gotten an outright deny yet on someone that we know should be able to get one, but that's going to take numbers. We're going to need your help. I know that you're hesitant to go out and buy ammunition. I was the first one that did it. I, I will never ask. I don't do it with the staff. I won't do it of you. I'm not going to ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do, whether that's march, you know, in the streets with that if I have to, which I'm willing to do. If you are, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I think it, it's going to be about time for that. And... So same thing. I think the more of us that are doing these background checks, I mean, come down. We've got deals on ammo. We'll sell 22 ammo for like $3.99 a box just to get you in here. The background check is $2.50. I have to charge you that. Uh, and we'll, we'll see what we can do to try to fight this. The more of you that get delayed that have pistol permits that know you have no reason to be delayed to buy these, the better standing we'll have in court. And we can try to fight this thing. The only way that I know how is going to be through the court system. So... Uh, so anyways, going back to, I've got a whole bunch of correspondence here laid out. So Tuesday night, we're here till midnight and we had people here right till the bitter end. I was very surprised. And we sold roughly three pallets of ammo in that one last day, which was absolutely insane. I'm glad we were able to get all that ammo out to two people. So, uh, and yes, John, I'm going to get to that. I am reading these comments. I'm sorry. There's a ton of them, but I am reading these. Needing an email address is very bad. And I'm going to get to that really soon. So Tuesday night turns into Wednesday at 12 midnight, right? 12.01. So I go on the website knowing it's not going to work, but I go on the website to try to do a background check. And of course it doesn't work. And so it's like, all right, well, right there, you know, I 
Typically, I'm not open at that hour, but I could be. There's no reason I shouldn't be allowed to conduct a constitutionally protected activity at any hour of the day. A journalist can publish an article at any time. Any other right can be done, you know, at any time. So should this. So right at 1210, I email nysnicks at troopers.ny.gov. Hello, it is September 13th. We have been cut off from the FBI NICS, which we got countless emails from the FBI letting us know that that's what's going to happen, and must use the New York State NICS system. Uh, is the system operational at this time? I cannot conduct a background check at this time. When does the background check system open for business? Why has there been little to no communication with the dealers regarding this rollout? Who is in charge of this department slash the implementation of this law? Respectfully, I don't know how true that was, but respectfully, me. And I did not get an answer until 6.22 in the morning. And it said, Mr. Lewis, the system is live. This is hilarious to me. You should be able to run a background check now. Such confidence from our, from our public uh, servants. Let us know if you have any, inf in, uh, any issues. The information for the rollout is contained in the Nick's website, which... They're not wrong. There is some information contained in the next website, but none of the questions that I ask are covered, nor do they address. You can always call us at one eight seven seven nys nicks That is true. You can always call them, and they will never answer. <laughs> there have been dealers calling for weeks and hours upon hours a day over the span of weeks to try to get information from these people, and they will not answer the phone. They say they're in training all day long for a system you know, this is on, say, Friday, the, what would that have been, the 8th or 9th, right? For a system that goes live in three or four days, they're finally getting training on it, and they're so busy they can't answer the phone. Absolutely ridiculous. So they emailed me at 622. I followed back up at 719. Can you tell me why the system was not immediately available on the 13th? 1201, you say you're ready. Why isn't it ready? How do we process a background check for a customer with no email address or phone number, just like John mentioned, so an email address, I'm going to pause our correspondence chat right now. So when you go and do the background check, you're typing in the customer's information and for an ammunition check or a firearms check, New York State is requiring you to input, us to input, an email address. I think that is a gross overreach of power. I mean, again, there are, there are things that are required in the law to buy a firearm. Those are set out by the ATF. We can all disagree on all of them. I don't agree with any of those restrictions as they are. However, those are the restrictions that we have. And those are codified within the law. And this law was also written in the legislature. It was signed by the Senate and the Assembly. And it's in there as written. There is no provision that I have seen. Now, I am not a lawyer. I didn't stay at the Holiday Inn Express, but I do know how to read, and I read through the law several times, and nowhere does it say that we have to get someone's email address. Nowhere does it say that. So let's continue. They replied, so just to put things into perspective again, they emailed me back at 622. I replied at 719, and they replied right back at 723. So someone's sitting there answering these emails. They got time. They're sitting there answering me. And they say, uh, the software was launched by the vendor. It is currently operational. I'm not disputing at 723 that it's operational. We know it's operational then. I'd already completed a check on myself by then for a box of 22 ammo. Why wasn't it operational between 1201 and 622? That's the failure right there. I can't say that. I can't say, oh, well, you know, Mr. ATF, I know those are the rules, but I just, I, I wasn't ready. I, I wasn't ready for it. That doesn't work that way. No one can hold them accountable, though. And I'll get to why. So the software was launched by the vendor. Customers are required to provide a phone number and address. This was a legislative decision. Well, we're going to find out if that's true or not and who made that decision and what, how that came to be when we get to the FOIL request that I've sent in. Not going to get that till February, but we'll get that when we get that. Uh, the phones are open. But as this is our first day, our operators are quite busy. Well, then maybe you should have staffed the correct amount of people or maybe don't do this at all because it's unconstitutional. Do you need any other assistance? I can have someone give you a call if you need any other assistance. Let me know 
will help you out. The most reassuring words ever spoken by the government. So keep in mind, try to, if you've written down the timeline here, that was at 723 they replied to me. And we've been emailing consistently back and forth. There's like three or four emails here over the past 10 minutes, 15 minutes. At 735, I emailed them back. Who is this vendor? So that I can, you know, if I have complaints about this system, I want to make sure I'm complaining to the right person. You know, email correspondent level th three, uh, they're not responsible for this. I'm venting to them, but they're not the person responsible. This vendor is. Who the hell's the vendor? Who made this website that's so bad? I want to know. I want to complain. I paid for it. Can you cite me the legislative decision that requires specifically an email address? Because they do mention that there is a uh, requirement to provide an address, a physical address that is true, that is in the, the text of the law, but not an email address. I need to know where and who to lodge a formal complaint against. You are all public employees. The New York State Trooper complaint form asks for the employee's name, badge number, and location. I will need all of that information, please, on whoever is replying to this email. I also need the name of the person who is in charge of the Knicks section, the New York Knicks section. Who has been in charge of the rollout of this system and who is supervising that person and making sure, not making sure that they've been doing a good job at all. So that was at 7.35 on Wednesday after constant communication back and forth. Now, unfortunately, I don't have it documented other than call records from my phone, but I probably called about a dozen times on Wednesday on top of these emails. Now, they've never replied at all on Wednesday and I forward it to them again this morning at 10, I basically copied my same email from before, and then I just asked again, who is the vendor? I called yesterday and was told that a supervisor would call, and I'm still waiting for that call, and I left him the, my, uh, my email or my phone number again. So on top of these electronic communications, which I like because they're – I have them, right? There's records of what was said and, and who said what and timestamps and all that. I also called them several times. Now, when you call – the 1877-NYS-NIX, I think it is, whatever it is. Um, when you call them, they will say, this is operator 301. And you go, okay, here's a question that I have. And it's a lot like calling the New York State Safe Act hotline. You're just talking to some dude that's not legal advice. It's not his legal opinion. It's nothing. It's just bupkis from some dude who won't even give you his fucking name. All they will tell you is operator 301, 302, th I think the highest I've gotten is 305, right? So I, on Tuesday, when we had our last hurrah for ammo, uh, we pulled up on the computer, the New York State, uh, do we have the overhead cam working? Does that work? Can we, I don't even know what that view looks like. Okay, so this is a complaint form, New York State Police, right? They have, they have the balls to put a compliment uh, section up on the New York State Police website. I wonder how often those get put in. But anyways, they have that, a complaint form on the state website. So we printed them out, and uh, I put on here, uh, as far as I've been able to tell by talking to various other people, there is a Captain Pendel, P-E-N-D-E-L. Captain Pendel is the one responsible or is in charge of the New York State Knicks unit, at least uh, as far as we can tell. So I started handing these out, and we got like 40 of these filled out by, uh, by customers giving them their thoughts and, and writing their complaints about this system. And obviously a lot of them relate to, you know, hey, this is an infringement. I don't agree with this and, and this is wrong, which are great. And those are valid complaints and they're, they're, they're there. Uh, but again, I have complaints like on the back end of the system like that I've been trying to, to lodge against my government that, that I pay for, that you pay for, that we all freaking pay for. So I call on the New York State Knicks website and I say, hey, I want to do a phone background check. The, the law specifically says that we have to, to uh, we have the ability to do either a computerized check or a phone check, which that's nice because sometimes you might go to a gun show and there's no internet there and I don't feel like doing a hotspot maybe or you might be somewhere where there is no internet service like that at all and all you can do is a landline, maybe phone call. There are dealers that have been in this business for years and years that don't have internet. There's areas in this state that even though they're supposed to have internet everywhere, I think now, right, uh, that don't have internet. I don't see anywhere in the law where it's a requirement to have a 
private company, like you don't, you shouldn't have to pay a private company for a service to use the government. There should always be, you know, you can, you can always like these forms, you can use their website, you can email them, but you can go to any troopers barracks and ask for one of these forms and submit one. That is always your right to show up in person to your government and hold them accountable. Uh, foil requests, complaints, any of that kind of stuff. The government has to address it in person. That's always in the law. And don't let them take that away from us. So we're handing these out and I'm calling and I'm saying, hey, why can't I do a phone background check? And they say, well, system's not ready yet. System, you know, when it's ready, you'll be able to do that. So we go back to, you know, when there's a law that I'm required to follow, I'm required to follow it when it says to follow it. I don't get to pick and choose when I get to follow it. So I'm talking to operator 301 and I want to say, hey, I'm saying, hey, I need your name. He goes, well, operator 301, that's all I'm going to give you. I need your badge number. I'm operator 301. That's all I'm going to give you. I need your location. Again, I'm not going to give you any of that information. It just goes around and around in circles of them being the poorest kind of public servants that there are. And Rebecca, yes, the Amish, they unfortunately, that's an ATF thing too. They don't believe in ID. So at least in New York State, they cannot buy a firearm at all. Uh, you know, in New York, you have to go through a dealer, even if it's a private purchase, you have to go through a dealer and yeah, the Amish, I don't even think the Mennonites can do IDs either. Or they, you know, they religious reasons choose not to, which I think is crazy. I don't think you should have to have a piece of plastic from the government to exercise fundamental human rights. Otherwise, are they really fundamental human rights at that point? So I don't know. We've got, uh, we've got a lot of crap up here. We've got I really don't know where to go from here other than through the courts, through legal processes. There are several lawsuits in the works that I've seen that we want to uh, support and help out. Like I said, if you can come down, especially if you're between 18 and 21, it seems like they're really just auto delaying any young person to buy ammunition. And as soon as we know that there's someone that, hey, this kid's bought ammo or bought a gun from us, we know they can pass a background check and they're going to be denied and delayed just because they're a young person. Absolutely crazy. Uh, I want to try to go through some of these comments because I'm sure some of them were, were good. Um, my video? Yeah, it's like choppy, isn't it? We should appreciate all of your efforts. Thank you. Uh, not, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I can see it then if you do it that way. Um... So, Jeff, it is $250 per ammo transaction and $9 per firearms transaction. Uh, that is the, it's in the law that that's what they can charge. I guess they're allowed to charge whatever it costs to run this system. And that's scary to me because you're talking about bureaucrats who want fancy offices and they want the best health plans for them and their bureaucratic little cronies and they want... You know, oh, who doesn't need a third executive office assistant for the 10th floor break room, you know? Uh, so I think these budgets are going to get extremely inflated and the costs will be passed on to us and you. So yeah, this year it's nine bucks for a gun. After the first year, they have to give a report to the governor that said this, you know, the background check system cost us X. We did X number of checks. So, you know, we made money, we lost money. Now we have to readjust the fee. So uh, what was that next question you had pop up there? Nah, it's a little, it's a little slow. I don't know if it's my computer. Or... You want to just read it out? Yeah. So I don't think they have anything currently going with this, but. There's a few things that have happened on the back end when the FBI emailed all the FFLs in the state. They sent an email out saying, hey, you're not going to be able to use us anymore. you got to get hooked up with New York State Knicks, so like, make sure you're doing that. And whoever sent the email courtesy copy to everybody instead of blind courtesy copying everybody. So like six, seven, eight hundred. I don't know how many you can do in a Gmail uh, email at once or, or a generic you know, email account. But they sent it out to like a third of the FFLs in one bulk 
email and we could all see each other's emails and old timers are like reply alling like get me off of this list i don't like this and so i replied all to the dealers and i invited them to a facebook group that i've been involved in for a little while that's all just for dealers in new york state and we we talk about what we can do to fight some of these things and it's tough before that email there was only like 40 of us and a lot of us are, are small. Most of us are small. Some of these guys are just operating out of their out of their house, off their kitchen table, as it were. And, and so it's tough. After that email that I, I sent out, there's like 104, 106 members, I think, now. So hopefully we can start growing. There's a, a Discord community now that's, that's started up of, of the New York State dealers. So hopefully we can all really band together. We have the good connections after Freedom Weekend now with FPC, with Jeff and Cody, directly from FPC. Like, we can text them and be like, hey, we've got this much money in the war chest, which it's unfortunately going to take a lot. We've got this much money in the war chest. We need to, you know, fight X, Y, and Z. Here's how we think it can be done. What are your thoughts? And, and let's get some things moving. So FPC, keep keep your ears open and, and, and eyes open, and, and we'll be dealing with them shortly. So... Hopefully, I mean, that's what it took for the Bruin decision. So I, I think, unfortunately, it's going to take that here as well. And I don't know. That's that's not a quick process. That's that's the worst part about all of this is we're going to be stuck with this for a very long time. Uh, you know, I mean, the Bruin decision, I think, took three years for that to work its way through the courts. And the last time I spoke to Tom King, I think that was about a quarter of a million dollars, if not more, for that suit just – they drag it out, and that's the nice thing that I like about FPC. They are the lawyers, so they're not milking this out or farming this out to another firm that's just milking us like the NRA does. They want to do the work. They want to win these cases. They want to operate as leanly as possible and just get the work done. Uh, Rudy, those Hokel shirts are available just online, unfortunately. We might do a run of them and order them in, but... The only way that we can easily do shirts like that is to make them like to order. So they take a little bit to get to you, but uh, it saves us from having to order like 20 of this size, 20 of that size. But they seem to be popular, so we might. If, if people think that'd be fun, uh, we, we might do that. Absolutely. Uh, this law is another example of a classist and racist law that New York State has. It's really the only kind of laws, as far as when it comes to guns, it's really the only ones they know how to make. They've even admitted this. I mean, it's it's willingly admitted, excuse me, by the state that when they, some of the very first gun laws that we passed were racist towards indigenous Americans that lived here, uh, and they you know, we didn't like that when the Europeans came over, so they restricted their gun rights. And New York actually used that, citing uh, that that was relevant, and that gave them uh, uh, precedence to restrict anyone's gun rights. You know, it's like, well, we've always been doing it, you know, so we're going to keep doing it. And just absolutely crazy. One of the most egregious things, going along with the email, when you do these background checks, they want to know your occupation, They've had that on the ammunition log since last summer. Anytime we sell ammo, we have to log who's buying what, the amount, the make, model, caliber, all that kind of stuff, right? And now when you do the background checks for both firearms and ammunition, we have to ask and log your occupation. Why does the government want to know what classes of people, certain jobs, you know, all the blue collar people are buying up all the ammo. We don't like that. We're going to have to put the screws on. You know, they're going to have so much data after a few years of this law. I'm very worried about what could come next. And that's why we have to fight this law. We have to fight it as hard as we can. We're going to be asking. I know times are tough for everyone right now. We are going to be asking for donations. We're going to be doing fundraisers. We're going to need to band together. That's the only way we can do it. Um, I see Nick asked anything about a ban on lead ammo. I could see that coming. Uh, that is one of those things that, you know, obviously from a hunter perspective, that's a good move to take. And a lot of the hunting community are kind of voluntarily going in that direction. And that's possible because, you know, you go deer hunting, 
box of 20 rounds, that could last you a couple seasons, three, four seasons, depending on how good of a shot you are and how many tags you want to fill. Uh, so you can afford to buy a $50 box of, you know, 30-06 or 6.5 Creedmoor that's solid copper rounds. That's not that big of a deal. When you're talking about 9 millimeter, you want to go to the range and shoot 200 rounds to practice your self-defense, you know, skills with your carry gun. That would add up. That would be very expensive. So, again, I think the state, they're going to miss the mark like they always do. They're going to make a blanket decision being like, oh, environment good, lead bad, ban lead. And it's like, well, they don't consider that a majority of places that people shoot. I mean, a lot of people shoot on their own land. But think about, again, the concentration of even if you had a farm over generations and that was like the one spot you shot, think about how much lead is really building up on that spot, uh, which the last time I checked, the lead comes out of the ground anyways. But uh, a lot of people shoot at formal ranges, either gun clubs or a place like this. And we got our facility mined. I mean, that's the what they call it. But they come in and they clean the lead out and it's recycled. So nothing's hurting the environment in any way. We've got filters. We've got all the state of the art, everything. Or we will. We did and we will. Uh, sad, sad to hear. But we, uh, you know, we, we have always done, I think our industry has always done the best that we can voluntarily for the environment. Much more so than, I, I hate to make this an us or them type of thing, but much more so than the city bound people that, you know, they live in these concrete jungles. And so they see any little type of emission as bad or any little type of concentration of anything as something that needs to be completely outright uh, categorically stopped instead of just, you know, same with like the wood stove. I don't want to keep um, digressing, but same with trying to ban wood stoves. You know, that's something, sure, if you're in lower Manhattan, you can't have wood stoves because if one person had them, everybody would have to have them and that wouldn't work. But, I mean, out here where we live, I think it'd be okay for people to have wood stoves, especially when there's power outages and stuff the way we have them. So uh, what, what else we got over there? I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, so there's no limits. You could buy an entire pallet at one time if you wanted to. You could buy a whole shipping container if you wanted to, and it would still be just the one transaction fee of $2.50. So there's no limit at this point right now. Um, and what was the other question? Uh, oh, purging, purging of the records. State police say that uh, I think it's 30 days. I think this is the FAQ for that somewhere in here. Is there a test window? <laughs> no, there was not a test window. Uh, how will notifications be sent? Can one invoice? Are they training? Will there be charges? Yes. Neither wait. Um, so I don't see that on here. The, I, I want to say it's stored for 30 days and then it's purged. I know a lot of people are very concerned, though. They ask for your social security number. It's a non-skippable question. You have to do it. And... You know, who's in charge? New York State is not very well known, or the government is not very well known for, like, information technology security. So it's like, how are they securing all this data from just the generic hacker going in there? It's just... The social security number was optional, right? Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, uh, so Mike asks, if someone were to order ammo in and they get a delay, is the answer eventually coming? Do you have to submit the check again? Will you have to charge for storage of the packages? At this point, we're not charging for storage. I will admit, sometimes it does hurt. I mean, I know we're not the cheapest. We're not Walmart. We're not Lucky Gunner. We're not, you know, a big box drop ship retailer. Um, but, you know, we, we do sell ammo. We are trying to be the most competitive uh, that we can be. And it is nice, you know, if people can can try us at least first. Uh, we don't want to have to up our transfer fees or add storage fees, but, you know, we also have to stay alive. This business has to survive if you want us to stay fighting for you, which I want to keep doing that. I want to keep providing for the four or five guys that this is their career, that their families depend on it uh, as well. So, you know, I do appreciate when people check with us, and I get it. Sometimes we can't beat a price, and sometimes it's not even close, and I get that too. That's that's retail. I'm a consumer. I hunt for deals. So I do ask that you try us first at least to see if we can get you the ammo. Uh, and uh, But, yeah, I mean, right now it's 10 bucks for a shipment, and that can be as much or as little. It's basically $10, bucks, uh, not like per box of ammo, but per, like, shipping box that comes in. Uh, I mean, we literally, we had a guy ship us a pallet the other day. It was 10 bucks. 
I mean, we had to use the forklift, but it is what it is. We want to get you this stuff. We want to help you out as best we can. So uh, how many people were able to buy ammo yesterday and today versus how many people were put on hold? So it was like 70% proceed, maybe 30% delay, something like that, maybe even 80-20. So a vast majority proceed, uh, but there were definitely surprise. You know, there were people buying ammo, just ammo, and it was a delay. And it's like, man, like, I know that guy's bought guns. Like, he knows he's not a criminal or anything like that. There's no reason he should be delayed in this scenario. Uh, I still think they have no legal right to delay us in these scenarios. I don't think they have a legal right to create this log as far as we're talking about the Constitution. The state can pass all these laws that they want, and they're legal in the state's eyes until they're challenged and, and we hold them accountable, which we will be. Uh, and Jeff is correct. A, a lot will go to PA, and uh, I get that. I, I don't blame you. I am concerned about traveling with it. Um, I don't think it's a, a crime per se, but I do suspect that the troopers will try to find some way to prevent people from doing that. I think uh, the Pennsylvania, I think the troop, the New York State troopers will pressure the Pennsylvania troopers to pressure the Pennsylvania gun dealers to, you know, be a little bit more strict of, you know, knowing, hey, you see a car pull in, New York plates, you don't sell them stuff. And I, I think that's going to be a lot more common. Maybe it won't be, but I, I just, I feel like that's going to be, uh, so New York is becoming California. Yeah, I mean, that's why we love the guys from FPC. They're from California, and they're diehard Second Amendment activists, and they see it all the time, too, where there's, there's people that just get fed up and they leave. And I never disparage anyone who does that, but that's not us. We're going to stay and we're going to fight. That's what they've done in California, and they've, they've as successful as you can be, they actually have had some successes out there, and I think they're one of our best chances for success here in New York. So um, what else we got? You got anything over there, buddy? That would be cool. That would be very cool. I don't see it. I just don't see it happening. I see, uh, I don't know. It, it, it seems, in, in, on one hand, like when they passed the SAFE Act back in 2013, there was an ammo background check as part of that law. State couldn't figure it out. At that time, the state was broke. Uh, not that we're not broke now, but I think the state feels like it's flush with cash. And yeah, I don't know if it's, just like negligence that they've waited this long to get this ready, that they just waited until the very bitter end. And we're like, all right, I guess no one's canceling this project or, you know, nobody filed the right lawsuit or injunction or whatever. We got to do it. So that's, uh, that's my problem is it's, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to tell, you know, where their allegiance lies. And, and I think we all know that it lies with the governor. You know, if you're, if you're a state trooper, especially those higher ups, I mean, I've FOIL requested all of these people's salaries and, and the hierarchy of the structure of the system, but we're going to be disgusted. I'm sure when we see how much these people make to oppress us, it's uh, it's sad. Mike, if your check is delayed, it's the answer coming eventually. Yes. So like with a gun, if you get a delay, Federally, we have to wait three days. New York State at one point changed it to five, and then they changed it to 30. So we, with ammo, when you get a delay, there's no such uh, provision. You have to wait until you get a proceed. So there is nothing you can do um, when you get a delay. We, we got to wait. So... Mike, do you, another Mike asked, do you think more people are going to start rolling their own when it comes to ammo or is it too expensive? Yes and no. Uh, I do think that there is a, um, a lot of people are hesitant to do it because there is a, there is a danger to it. You can definitely do it wrong and you can injure yourself if you put too much powder in, if you crimp the bullet wrong, if you set the bullet in too hard, you know, all, there's all sorts of things that, you know, you could do wrong. And if you're not paying attention or you're, you know, uh, drinking a beer and watching TV and just kind of holding the crank in like this, you know, uh, bad things can happen. You, you gotta, you gotta do your diligence when you're reloading. I do think that's going to become very popular though. None of those items are regulated. 
You can buy all the powder you want if you can find it. You can buy all the primers you want if you can find them. You can buy all the brass you want if you can find it. So none of that is regulated under the law. You can get as much of that as you want, again, if you can find it. That is the trouble since the pandemic. I mean, it's been, it was hard to find stuff since the last election, I'll say. And, and reloading has definitely been one of those where there are guys who, a lot of you remember the 22 shortages uh, in, in 2016, that there's a lot of guys when they have the financial ability, they will just, you know, if, if, this, if this big box retailer gets 10 boxes of powder a week, I buy eight of them, you know, or I buy all 10 of them. And they just stockpile it and sit on it. And it makes it hard for everyone. But uh, I would encourage you, if you know someone that knows how to reload, spend a little time with them. At least, at least get familiar with the process where you could, where you could if you had to. That's a good skill to have. It can be daunting. Uh, you can get way too deep in the weeds as far as like precision goes. But I think there's a happy medium that a lot of people can find where I can make, you know, reliable and accurate ammunition on my own. I think it's an important skill to, to know. Um, Yes, you can. So if you go to a big box store, chances are they will tell you no. They will ask for your pistol permit. And in fact, some of those stores will look at your permit and see if you have a 357 Magnum or 38 Special uh, revolver. Some of those stores go that far, which is crazy to me. The law says that you have to be 21 to buy handgun only ammunition. So if you're over 21, it doesn't matter. Uh, in New York State, if you're under 21, but over 18, of course, as long as you have a long gun that shoots it, totally fine, you know? So you have a Henry, you come on in, you're good to go. Uh, I see Ray asks, if he orders a pallet and he gets a delay, he has to wait. Uh, yeah, you're, you're going to have to wait, and I probably would have to charge you if you bought a whole pallet and it was a delay. So it sucks. I, I don't agree with it. I think we need to, as I've said, fight it as much as and hard as we can but it's going to take a lot of work from a lot of us. We're here. I know we're in the midst of our reconstruction, which I promise will be starting any week. Any week, you'll see a lot more movement out here than you have. Things are in the works behind the scenes. Things are happening. Things have been ordered. They're coming in. It's just lead times are crazy right now, but very soon you will start seeing some work out here. I promise you that, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, John, yeah, survival skills. Absolutely, man. Uh, I think it's important. Jennifer says she'd love to learn a class uh, about reloading. And that I, I want to find someone who's comfortable. There's a lot of people that I know that are reloaders. But teaching a class, there's a certain amount of, I don't want to say risk. I don't know if that's the right word. But there's a, there's a responsibility there that as the instructor, not a lot of people are willing to put their neck out and, and say, this is how you reload because they don't want to have someone come back, you know, three finger Joe and, and be like, oh, I did exactly what you said and I blew my hand off. And it's because they not saying that could, I mean, that could happen, but uh, that's not likely to happen. Uh, I think anybody that teaches a class will tell you, read your reloading manual, read it again, like put it under your pillow, sleep with that thing learn it before you really start. Uh, but I do, if, if there's interest, let us know in the comments, shoot us an email. If you like info at the firing pin and we'll see how many people would be interested. And if we can get an instructor who'd be willing to go over, you know, a glossy overview of, of some of the steps. Um, and yeah, Adam, definitely liability waivers all around. That's always my funniest, uh, or my first like joke that I go to when uh, when we're about to do something risky, like you know when a ladder comes out and someone's like getting up on top of the ladder, like change out a weird light bulb or whatever. It's always like, hey, um, so you signed the waiver, right? You can I get you to sign another one of those? Thank you very much. Uh, There's one. There's not one right now. Uh, well, okay, sorry. New York State absolutely will charge you the two fifty or the nine dollars as soon as we click submit for that check. We've already typed in our credit card info, and you're gonna get charged. Even if it's a deny, you're gonna get charged. The check was performed. You're denied. You're being oppressed. Thank you very much. Here's the bill. So, uh, 
yes, Tim, YouTube is a great resource for that, especially, again, someone who's willing to upload a video saying this is how you do it. That's taking a lot of, a lot of guts on their part. So uh, generally, I would, you know, you shouldn't trust the internet. But in that sense, the two-way community is very good. People don't put stuff up in that. I mean, if, if there was wrong info in there, they would get called out for it, and that video would get uh, pulled down pretty quick. And uh, Joel says that RCBS has some good learning videos. I'm sure they do. That makes a lot of sense. Can you still order online uh, and have it shipped to an FFL, Eric asks. Yes, you can. So you can still order ammo online, have it shipped to us. It's still the same process, though. So as I said a little earlier, we always encourage you to call us. Give us a try, at least. I know I can't always uh, beat prices. Sometimes we're not even close. That's retail. But I do appreciate it when people at least give us a try and try to support local as much as they can. But we are still receiving uh, shipments. Sean says, anybody going to stop selling to law enforcement like everybody threatened last go around and didn't? <laughs> Derek, thank you, my friend. Uh, so, Sean, yeah, I mean, we have thro floated that idea. Um, I'm friends with most of the dealers locally in this area, and, you know, I've spoken to a lot of them, and there's a lot of them that are interested, but there's a few that would not participate in something like that. So it's hard to... to hey, we're going to do this type of, of ban. We're going to not sell to law enforcement. And I, I'm sure, Sean, this would what I would assume he meant, and I mean, when I say we're not selling to law enforcement, I would mean like the department. Obviously, if an individual officer comes in on their own time with their own money, we'll sell them whatever they want uh, that's legal for anyone else to own. But it's not very often that we get department contracts to begin with. It's just not something we really chase. Um, Genesee County has come to us. <coughs> Excuse me. Genesee County has come to us in the past. Um, the town of Batavia has come to us. I think even Leroy, the town of Leroy, the village of Leroy has come to us. And uh, yeah, Eric, the troopers would never buy from us, but yeah, we, we wouldn't. We would not. Um, Kevin asks, are you aware of any functional enhancements to the background check? Additional databases that are checked? Or is the entire process arbitrary and capricious? Those are some great SAT words, by the way. Um, <laughs> yes and yes. So the system for firearms still utilizes the NICS system. So I believe there are some state databases. I know there are some state databases that feed into... There, there's essentially three indices or indexes that the NICS... When you, do it, when you initiate a background check through NICS... There's three big databases that they go through. One of them is called Triple I. I can't think of the other ones, but there's three big databases that they, they run all your stuff through. And as far as we know, with the New York State system, it essentially will go, we submit the check, the state runs it through NICS, they run it through the state databases, which are still tied to NICS, but I'm assuming there's some type of slight bureaucratic delay, you know, like the day you get pulled over for X, Y, Z or get charged with whatever crime you get charged with. There's some time. I mean, a clerk, a person has to submit these documents. There's some time for them to get uploaded. There's some time for the databases to speak to each other or whatever. I'm not a computer guy, so I don't know how many quirks that takes, but it takes some time, right? So I'm assuming there's a little bit of, of, uh, of, of maybe, you know, they run it through the FBI, but they also run it through the state level system. Guns, there is somewhat of like a legally defined process of how that has to work. But ammo, man, that's all up in the air. It's whatever they want to do. Uh, we have seen, the, tr the troopers have said themselves that it's possible for someone to pass a background check to buy a gun, but fail it on buying ammunition, or at least pass immediately to buy a gun maybe get a delay to buy ammunition. That tells me that there are definitely other databases they're looking at that they might not be allowed to search when they're dealing with firearms. But with ammo, like I said, maybe they could. Uh, the thought in my head is that the state police intelligence unit, they're the ones that go through our Facebook pages and all of our social medias. They see something that they don't like. You know, They'll pull that counterterrorism card. If you see something, say something. And they'll just be like, oh, we don't like Timmy's posts. So, you know, he's on the no ammo list for however long. Is that a year? Is that for life? Is that who knows? How do you appeal that? How do you even know you're on that list, right? That is the scary thing. 
Uh, Dylan, how long are these records being held for? That's unknown. I looked through. I didn't want to make you wait while I looked through the FAQ. I don't see where they address that. I will add that to my list of things to hold their feet to the fire on. Uh, how long are they storing these records for? The FBI has to purge them overnight. Every 24 hours, everything is purged other than there's a uh, transaction number that gets assigned and then whether it was a proceed or not. That's the only thing that gets saved. So they don't save your name, any of that kind of stuff. But New York State, 100% will. Uh, Ethan asks, how fast is the check? In theory, it's just as fast as Nick's. In practice, the guys today were describing how, you know, you start typing in, and there's like four different entry screens. They want like the customer's basic information first. You click next. Then they want, say, like their height, weight, and this type of stuff, aliases, whatever. Then you click next. Then they want to know maybe like the guns information. Then you click next. And then they want to know like this final bit of information. Then you click next. And countless times today, the guys were saying that it would, they'd get to like the third of those fourth screens and it would crash. And you'd have to start completely over again. So uh, the state, I don't think, knows how or is capable of making a good functional website. And that, that's only um, being shown now. Uh, George, the new law does not include background checks for gunpowder or primers. That is correct. You can buy all the gunpowder and primers you want. No background check required. Uh, Mike, curious if delays are and will be related to certain calibers. I can see it. I can 100% see it. These calibers are more associated with crime or, you know, the perception of crime, so they're going to be uh, targeted better. Uh, yeah, George, make your own freedom seeds. Bruce, thank you, sir, and uh, great gun show. Bruce uh, runs the Niagara Frontier Gun Show Circuit. Had a great show over in Hamburg last weekend. Saw a lot of you there. We had a lot of fun. Um I was talking to Sandy, who is the lady who runs the Syracuse show, which that's this weekend. I'm actually heading out to Syracuse uh, tomorrow. Wow, tomorrow to start uh, loading stuff up for the Syracuse show. And man, uh, I feel bad. I feel really bad for her. I think the state specifically chose. Uh, it's such an arbitrary date. September 13th. What a weird number. What a weird date on a Wednesday. Why? Like. It feels like they targeted, and I, she feels this way. She shared that with me today. She feels like they chose that date to kill her show on purpose. Uh, it's, I don't know if the longest running show in New York State, but it's the show at the state fairgrounds, and it's been running as long as the state fair has. So it's a legacy in this state. You know, the state makes it extremely hard for gun owners to do their legal, constitutionally allowed activities. So it's kind of one of those things the state considers that show like an olive branch. Like, oh, yeah, the gun owners hate us, but at least we let them do Syracuse. And so the state sees that as like, okay, we'll let them do that one thing, and that keeps the peasants at bay another year. Um, and now, who knows? I mean, I, I don't blame her for not wanting to continue and not wanting to keep doing this, uh, this stuff. Every year they make it harder and harder, and every year more dealers drop out and less customers come because... You know, it's a, it's just a, one of those downward cycles. It's, it's, it sucks. Um, do you have any other questions you're sitting on? Am I kind of caught up? I see Mark here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Mark asks, has anyone that has been put on hold um, at TFP gone elsewhere and tried to purchase ammo and gotten a different result? I have not spoken to anyone who has, but again, that would be an interesting uh, experiment. I'm sure a lot of the dealers have cheap 22 ammo available. I would love to know if someone, yeah, comes down here, gets delayed, goes up the street somewhere else, goes up to runnings, goes up to FLX outdoors, goes anywhere else. And, uh, and, and yeah, do they get a proceed then? Do they get a delay? It just illustrates how bad the system is. I think the more, excuse the bad pun, the more ammo we have against the state, the better. So I encourage you, uh, to come down if you're comfortable, do what you can and put this system to the test and you might be the one, you know, it might be the, uh, you know, Lewis versus New York State and you're the one that's enshrined in history because the state, you know, infringed upon your rights and you had the guts to take the state to court, you know, with our help. So uh, it's, it's hard, I know. Uh, I, I applaud everyone who filled out one of these complaint forms. Uh, that put their name and address and, and phone number and stuff on there. And I mean, I did one 
And it, it takes a little bit of guts to like hold your government accountable. But, you know, think about what our forefathers did in the 1770s. So I think we can send in some forms and I think we can, uh, can hold some people's feet to the fire, uh, metaphorically, of course. I specifically left my pitchfork out of this video. Yeah, so they changed the law. Any black powder firearm is now considered a gun like anything else that needs a background check. So before last summer, you could buy a black powder pistol, black powder long gun, no background check needed, and you were good to go because they're they're essentially almost considered antiques, even though they're you know they were made yesterday. It's a it's an obsolete uh, technology as far as the government is concerned. Well, now in New York State, those have been redefined. You now need to have a background check run on those, and uh, just just crazy, crazy. Yeah, not that we've seen, but again, it's that's all. It's it's too early yet. Uh, I think that's definitely something that the state is capable of of just making those determinations. That yeah, you know what, Dale's been buying too much ammo. Let's let's put a little pause on him for now. Let's let's delay all of his uh, all of his purchases. And how would you know that that's happening to you? You know, they don't tell you this information. They just say you're delayed or you're denied. There's an appeals process, and they say like here are some possible prohibitors. These are not all of the prohibitors. So you know we're 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 fighting a system that we don't even know what we're fighting in a way, and. I've said it before, I submitted a FOIL request a couple weeks ago. We're not going to get any of that information until February. And I should clarify, we're not going to get an answer on whether they're going to give us the information until February. So, I mean, that alone is a ridiculous abuse of power. I mean, the government has these records. We've paid for them to be created. Can it really take, does it really take six months to find out if they can send me emails between people setting up this system or the pay scale or the location or any other public documents related to this background check system. I think it's ridiculous. Uh, so Jennifer asked, what are some of the prohibitors? They are all, at least from this, this is the New York State Guide for Appeals, for appealing the background check. And it's the same for ammo or guns. So some of them are pretty obvious, has been convicted of a felony, is a fugitive from justice, is an unlawful user of or addicted to any controlled substance, has been adjudicated as mentally defective, is illegally in the United States, uh, has been discharged uh, from the armed forces dishonorably, has renounced their U.S. citizenship, uh, is subject to an order of protection, has been convicted of a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence, or is under indictment for a felony level offense. So, And that, again, is some of the possible prohibitors. That is not a definitive list. They won't tell us a definitive list, and I truthfully think that they have a secret no-fly list that they are utilizing in this regard that I probably just became a member of. Uh, what else we got? We have a ton of participation tonight. I just want to thank everybody. Obviously, nights like tonight, we do we do get a huge surge of, of followers and listeners and things. While I have all of you, I'd like to encourage you to follow us on Spotify. I believe that that is the best platform to listen to this when it's not uh, being watched live. If you go into Spotify, you can see our back catalog. You can uh, support us, and it really just helps reinforce that we're not just talking to our girlfriends and wives and, and moms sitting at home uh, supporting us. So we love it. We love the support. We love interacting with all of you. We do this every Thursday night, 7.15s, uh, although we did take off last week. I do apologize for that. It was just crazy. We were getting... We were getting um, Burnt out, we were at the Alexander Steam Show and the gun show, the Hamburg gun show last weekend. So uh, I want to thank everybody for listening tonight. And we do have, um, do the, so William asked, do they also do a health, uh, 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 like a mental health physical when they do background checks? I'm sure they absolutely do. I think that's one of the reasons New York State, obviously they wanted the control, but I'm sure there are some records that the state feels would disqualify you, especially from buying ammunition. They might not be able to prohibit you from buying a firearm, but if they can stop you from buying ammo, that, in their eyes, is probably just as good. Uh, and I'm sure there are some things uh, in regards to mental health where now they're going to tie in some of those records that, again, the feds, 
you know, the feds say, give us these exact records. And the state might say, well, I want to give you these other records too. But the feds will say, well, we don't want those records. So no. Uh, but now the state is in control of who gets a yes and who gets a no. So uh, Nick says that they're waiting on Justice Thomas to answer our case. Soto always gets it to first because this is her district. <laughs> Junior, I am not old enough. Thank you. I'm flattered. But uh, I also like not having two holes in the back of my head. So, <laughs> and I'm not a lizard person. I believe it or not, I, I cannot be a politician because um, I'm actually human. I am of human origin and not lizard people origin. So that's actually a requirement to run for office is to be a lizard person. So uh, John asks, are you going to get the mobile range back? So yes, we will be getting the mobile range back. So we were supposed to get it back uh, like Tuesday or Wednesday, but it broke. So um, I'm not going to say that we weren't partially responsible for that because we probably were because you guys shoot a lot. Um, that range was designed for, I'll say, like trade show usage. And that's where I first uh, found that range and shot on it was at a, a trade show down in Nashville where they would bring in, you know, like, hey, here's the latest Glock. And they actually had the latest, the new Glock aftermarket trigger that had just come out. So a bunch of the dealers got to shoot five rounds each through the, the new Glock trigger, which was super cool. And over the course of the day, probably like 100-ish dealers took them up on that opportunity. And it was like a two or three day show. So, you know, five rounds each, 100 dealers, maybe 300 dealers total over the three days. So maybe 1,500 rounds expended. And that could be a couple hours for us, right? I mean, we would do that probably every day, all day, solidly. So the, we beat the range up pretty good. And it went to this last event this past weekend and it got used pretty hard again. And it just needs to be refreshed. I mean, we've had it, it sounds crazy, almost going on six months now, about five months. And... It's not meant for that type of continual abuse. It's meant to go to the trade show, a couple hundred rounds, maybe a thousand, take a break. You know what I mean? Like it's just not, it wasn't its design. So it's being fixed. Soon as it's headed back, we'll let you know and uh, we'll, be, we'll be having fun with it. A um, couple questions here. John, see you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. That sounds good. Um, Joel. Does it say where to go here? Does it say anything about personal transfers of ammo needing a background check? So we, again, I'm going to say I am not a lawyer. I'm not your lawyer. Never passed the bar. None of that. So I, obviously the state would say no. Like if you were to call the troopers numbers and ask them, they would say, no, you're not allowed. When I read through these laws, I only see requirements for FFLs, for dealers, for keepers and sellers of ammunition. I do not see requirements for individuals or where there are penalties, <clears throat> you know, say like a straw purchase for a firearm, intentionally buying it for someone who can't pass a, a background check or is ineligible to have that gun. I don't see that anywhere in the law. There's nothing that I can read in the law that says that like a felon, that even a felon, like I think... Josiah, correct me if I'm wrong, if you know, I think a felon could own ammunition. They can't own a firearm, but this isn't a firearm. This is ammunition. I think those are, they are different things. Uh, and I don't see anywhere, you know, the SAFE Act prohibited person-to-person -person transfers unless you go through a dealer. And I don't see anything in there that does the same thing for ammo. Now, I'd like to get some more clarification on that. I'm not advocating for you to come out and do what people do with like the res and cigarettes and going out and buying, you know, 20,000 rounds and having one of you be the sacrificial lamb. But, you know, it's also one of those things, there's no, there's no serial numbers on ammo. There's no form that you're going to fill out saying that you bought this specific ammo. And there's no way for them to track. It's just, it's just a stupid system. It's just a stupid system. Um, yeah, are you still filling out a 4473? Yes, for firearms. It's still the same old federal form. 
and uh, I'm in a bunch of FFL groups, like on Facebook and Discord and stuff. And one of the guys, I can't remember what state it was, but they said, you know, there's there are several states already. I think there's around 20 states that are point of contact states, which is what it is when the state runs the background check for you. Uh, there's about 20 of them already that operate like that, unfortunately. And a lot of them, I mean, not a lot of them, several of them have their own state level form. So this dealer said, hey, just be glad you don't have a state form because they have to fill out both. You'd have to fill out the 4473 because that's a federal requirement. And then some states are making you fill out their form, like both of them. So hope that isn't a thing. But yeah, for now. Uh, so Kathy says felons cannot own or possess ammo. So there's that. Um, Ray, how do you think this will affect the kids' shooting programs in the state? How can a coach get the ammo to the shooters in our programs, will the parents have to be there? How does a gun club handle the background checks? So that is a great question. Since the SAFE Act, they've had to register as keepers of ammunition, I believe, was the, the, the term for those types of groups. A scout camp that gets a bunch of 22 ammo or a gun club. Now, all the gun clubs around here, they'll have you know the clubhouse and you go to shoot trap and you forgot your shells or the club will sell them to you for whatever, like 50 cents over cost, right? And so I definitely think this will affect the clubs. As far as I know, the way that I see it and the way that I interpret it, they wouldn't have to do a background check because it's not like leaving. It's being expended here, like on, on premises. I guess like I was trying to think of analogies. I almost think of it as like, um, like off-road diesel, right? Where it's like, it's cheaper because you're not going to use it on the roads so you don't pay the taxes on it or whatever. It's kind of the only analogy I can think of is it's like, well, this ammo is not going to enter commerce really. Like it's just going to be used here. So I would argue no. Like if I was running a youth group, I would not concern myself with running background checks on everyone. I would just use the ammo as, as allotted. And as a keeper of ammo, you should be allowed to buy it directly from a distributor or a shop like mine without needing a background check. Like someone would come in as a representative from the organization be like, hey, here's my certificate. I'm with the Boy Scouts. We're keepers of ammo. We need a thousand rounds for Massaweepy. Here it is. You know what I mean? Uh, and no background check would have to be done. That's my understanding uh, until we get uh, updates. That's how we're going to do it. And yeah, Nick, exactly. Like, and that's how we're going to run it. If you're coming down to shoot, you're not going to have to do it. Um, uh, Jake, thank you, my friend. I, a few of us have joined, uh, some of the gyms around and I've got, uh, little kids and that's enough to do it right there. Lose a little bit of weight. Um, yeah, so there's Nick and what else we got? Steve, I'm in Florida working for an ammo company, just seeing where this will go. Yeah, Steve, he posted some crazy, I'm friends with him on Facebook. He posted some crazy photos of the storm last week, I want to say. Um, so... Oh, this has gone a little while, a little while longer than I wanted it to. I want to just come out here and rant for a little bit and, and get out of here. But um, I, I'm amazed that we had so many followers tonight, so many, so many viewers. Uh, I hope that we can continue this uh, conversation and have this energy stay with us. Um, I commented before, I'm down to March. I mean, I've done it before. I'll do it again. I've never done it in New York. Uh, I'd like to with all of you. I think I'm going to need all of you standing side by side with me uh, to have enough courage to do it. But uh, I'm down. I think, you know, leave a comment below if you think we should be going to Albany and uh, letting our voices be heard. I mean, we have done nothing wrong. We, the Second Amendment community, have done nothing wrong. Um, we are law-abiding people trying to defend our families, trying to exercise our natural-born rights, and the government just keeps infringing upon those rights, thinking they're solving a problem that, that they're not. They ha I, I'd like to think they do have good intentions, like they, they do want to solve the problem, but it, it just seems like they don't really care about that, and they really do just care about control. And all of those, you know, um, cautionary tale films and movies of the 80s and 90s uh, it seems like they're coming true, and it's it's very unfortunate um, that we're going to be forced to people are going to be forced to do things that they shouldn't be forced to do to keep the rights that they have. Uh, we shouldn't be forced to spend tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars in court um, to get our rights back from from these oppressors, from from these tyrants. I mean, you, if 
if you came down, you've seen this. We go to the overhead. You've seen that sticker. If you've come down, we've got a lot more. So stick them up. Put them around places. Let her know what you think. Um, and I don't think there's any new questions that I haven't covered already. Um, so, yeah, let me know in the... Let me know in the comments when you want to go to Albany. Let me know. I don't even know who's there. Like, when? None of them are there right now. I mean, if they need to, she'll call an emergency session in the middle of the night to do whatever she needs. But I'm sure uh, I'm sure they won't be there when we need them. So get out there and vote. That's, that's absolutely Brett. And Jason, I think I know what those initials mean, and I agree, my friend. So, all right. I think we're out of here. I'm going to call it for the night. Thank you all. And uh, we're going to keep fighting for you.